en question. Le président, président. veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now in session. Est ouverte. During today's sessions, and as already, uh, as the chamber has already informed of the parties to the proceedings, we did that on the 24th and 25th of January that the chamber would be hearing the testimonies janvier. of. La Chambre va aujourd'hui entendre la déposition Al de M. Al Rokov. We have been informed appropriately that today we can conduct the proceedings. La Chambre a été informée que l'audience pourra se dérouler Mr. Cycle, selon the les modalités UNM prévues. To report on the state of the parties to the proceedings. La greffière de faire rapport sur la présence des parties à l'audience. La greffière. Mr. Cycle, with the Mr. Presidents, all the parties to the proceedings are present. Toutes les parties sont présentes. Except Mr. Pickang, national colleague lawyer for the civil parties. Who is principal Cambodian for the personal commitment? Lequel est absent Mr. pour raison personnelle. Monsieur Yang Sari est présent, il est due, dans la cellule due to his temporaire. And Mr. Nunti is pour also de santé. absent Monsieur due Nunchia to his health concerns. He is still admitted to the Khmer Soviet uh, Friendship Hospital. De He has submitted his waiver. Il a fait remettre à la chambre. Un document he has waived his right to be present during the Il testimonies of TCW565. Pour la déposition du témoin TCW565 is now available. Le témoin the witness la has already de la chambre. mentioned that uh, the witness has or is not in any relationship with an accused Ce or a, a civil party de parenté avec les accusés ou les parties civiles before this chamber the, the witness will take an oath before the chamber in a moment thank Le you témoin mr president va serment dans quelques instants. the president uh, thank you mr sakovuti before Merci, we call the Madame witness Sakovuti. the chamber Avant which is to rule the on the la chambre va se prononcer by mr sur la demande submitted to the chamber on the 25th Nunchia of january 2005 le 25 janvier the chamber is seized of uh, this waiver il s'agit d'un document de renonciation. Mr. Nunchi has waived his right to Nunchi the testament to be present in the testimony of this witness TCW TCW565. The waiver was submitted in the Le hospital through his counsel. A été communiqué à l'hôpital par l'accusé. And according to the medical report We have learned that uh, Mr. Médical, Nguyen Chia's uh, health is improving significantly and he could be released amélioré. or discharged from the hospital Il se peut shortly. À quitter the chamber notes that Mr. Nguyen Chia is still being admitted uh, to the hospital. However, donc he is mentally fit uh, and he has waived apte, his right to be present in the proceedings. During the testimonies of TCW 565. The chamber, therefore, now conducts uh, the hearing La chambre of the testimonies of TCW 565 without TCW the presence 565 of Mr. Nunchi. officer is Nunchia. now instructed to bring Monsieur in the witness. Veuillez faire entrer le témoin dans le prétoire. The President Court Officer président. is now instructed to hold on. Monsieur Dodian, Canavas, you are on your feet and you may now proceed. Maître Canavas. 
The president, could you please hold uh, him president. back there for a while? Uh, good morning, Mr. President, Mr. good morning, Your Honors, and good morning to everyone in and around the courtroom. Uh, the reason why I'm standing on my feet is in regards to the prosecution request on Friday for additional time. En vue uh, <coughs> temps we received an email at approximately 3.06 Friday vendredi concerning this particular witness, and it, sujet de ce témoin, in paragraph 3, paragraph the prosecution, 3, apparently, while preparing for the testimony of Mr. Rokar, suddenly uh, realized that the gentleman may have more information uh, to, uh, to, uh, to reveal here in court and therefore sought additional time. Uh, normally, we don't take a harsh général, position when additional time is requested. However, I do take this opportunity to point out, one, we received it on Friday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon where it was well known, well in advance, that the gentleman Alors, was going to come and give evidence. Two, we heard a presentation from another prosecutor last week la which made reference to the gentleman and indicated that he uh, would have testimony to give. So obviously it was well known of who this person is and what he may have to contribute. Three, Mr. Apporter. Rokoff is a rather Monsieur an institution Rokoff in, this, in, uh, in Phnom Penh. Everyone more or less knows him. We know Phnom him from the movie Tout The Monde Killing Fields, played by John Malkovich. So it seems Malkovich. rather shocking that the prosecution at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday all of a sudden heures, came to this revelation that, gee, Mr. Rokoff may have some additional information and therefore we may, may need additional time. As a matter of principle, we think Par principe, that the trial chamber should stick to its current schedule. In the future, if the prosecution wishes to ask si for additional time, they should do so in a timely fashion, not wait until a Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock to make such submissions, particularly when this is not a surprise witness que ce pas un témoin and he is surprise. not an inconsequential witness. He is well known. Est un qui est it was well known in advance and he would come and give evidence bien à and il it was well known the topics to which he could contribute uh, for uh, 002 slash 01 or in fact 002 Thank you. l'ensemble du dossier 002. The President, thank you, Counsel. International co-prosecutor, you may now Merci proceed. Co uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good morning to you and the members of the bench and Merci. Counsel. Bonjour à tous. Uh, I'm rather surprised uh, by Je this objection. Uh, I believe Mr. Carnavas's description of Carnavas precedent in this court is rather off. Uh, it has been frequent, La in fact, that people have made requests avis, for more time on the day the witness testifies, depending on how things proceed, uh, and we made an effort du, uh, to les notify ont déjà the parties ahead of time of this. Furthermore, selon uh, I would note that it was only at 1 p.m., I believe, Friday afternoon, where the Nunchea team indicated uh, that they were prepared uh, to provide a waiver so that we could go forward with this witness. Indeed, the night before, in the papers that were reported that morning, uh, Mr. Nunchea's international matin, counsel was quoted as saying he would not provide a waiver. So the, uh, there was a degree of uncertainty last week as to whether or not we would be proceeding with this witness. We have been proceeding diligently with him. We will proceed diligently with our questioning, of course, and may be able to finish within the time. However, uh, I would note uh, another reason for our request is that we find ourselves in a circumstance where uh, court time tomorrow may end up not being used uh, if we finish the witness today. Uh, under these circumstances, it seems to us it is reasonable if the parties si need an, uh, some additional time with this witness. Dit, si we believe we can temps provide temps detailed temps testimony lequel, about the events leading up to the day of 17 April and the events immediately after that. 
if et de the parties require avril, additional time, si it seems ont besoin to us that uh, the court proceedings tomorrow nous, may, be, may be available. Now, I'm prepared to proceed de to advise the court uh, after the morning session how Après much additional matinée, time we believe de de based on, on that. But we did want to notify the court ahead of time of the possibility that we would uh, request some additional time to complete our examination of this witness. <coughs> The President. Le President. On this particular issue, following hearing the observation by parties, the Chamber will assess uh, this situation as the situation unfolds. Court officer is now instructed to usher in the witness. Le président. The president. Bonjour. Good morning, Mr. Witness. What is your name? Comment vous Can you tell the chamber your full name? Donner votre nom complet. Yes, Le my name is Alan oui, Thomas Rockoff. Thomas Rockoff. The president. Le président. Thank you, Mr. Rockoff. Merci, Mr. Rockoff. How old are you now? Quel âge avez-vous? 64. Réponse. J'ai 64 ans. Okun. Thank you. Question. Where are you currently residing? Où êtes-vous domicilié? I live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, USA. Fort Lauderdale, en Floride, aux États-Unis d'Amérique. Thank you. What is your occupation? Question. Quel est votre profession? I am a photographer. Je suis photographe. Thank you. I would like to remind you, Mr. Rockoff, uh, that uh, you pause Rockoff, until you see the red light on your mic uh, before you start, because it is important that your microphone microphone is activated before you speak, otherwise your testimony will not get through the sound Merci. system and the interpreter would not be able to interpret your uh, testimony. So please uh, be advised Veuillez, accordingly. Look at Can you tell the court 
the names of your father and mother. comment s'appelle votre mère et votre père. My father's name is Louis Rockoff. My mother's name is Marie Rockoff. Marie Rockoff. Are you married? Êtes-vous marié? If so, what is your wife's name? And how many children have you got? My wife's name is Victoria Bornes, and I have no children. Nous n'avons pas d'enfants. Thank you. What is your nationality? American. Réponse. Je suis américain. Mr. Rockos, le président. In your capacity as the witness before the extraordinary, before the trial chamber. The chamber requires you to take an oath in accordance with your belief and religion. Do you agree with this? Yes, I do. Ms. Faiza, please uh, conduct the oath uh, for Mr. Rockoff in accordance with his belief and religion. Good morning, Mr. Rockoff. Please place your left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand, and repeat the following oath after me. I solemnly declare that I will speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I solemnly declare that I will speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you, Mr. Rokoff. According to the report by the greffier, to your knowledge, you are not related by blood or by marriage to any civil parties to case 002, and you are not related by blood or by marriage to any of the co-accused, either Mr. Nunchi accused upon or Ying Sari. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. The Chamber wishes to advise you on your rights and obligation. In your capacity as the witness before the trial chamber, you may refuse to respond to any question or any request for your comments which may incriminate yourself. In other words, you may enjoy uh, the right against self-incrimination. So in your capacity as the witness, you throughout the proceeding, of uh, this testimony, you shall, however, respond to all the questions posed uh, by parties or the chamber. And as a witness, you have to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, uh, based on what you have seen, what you have recollected, or you have experienced yourself through your observation uh, concerning the events uh, that you have come across, and you respond to questions uh, concerning those events uh, posed by parties or judges of the bench. Mr. Rockoff, have you ever <coughs> provided any interview to the investigators of the uh, OCIJ of the Extraordinary Chambers in the course of Cambodia before? As of now, I have not. No. Thank you. The Chamber wishes to advise the prosecutor that uh, in conducting the testimony of this particular witness, the Chamber will hand over the floor to the prosecution uh, to put the question to the witness first. I believe. And as for the time allocation, the chamber has already advised the, the prosecutor and other parties. The prosecutor, you may proceed now. Thank you, Mr. President. Le
Good morning, Mr. Rockoff. Uh, my name is Dale Lysak. I'm one of the international prosecutors of court, and I will be asking you some questions this morning. Um, let me uh, remind you, we'll be, we will both be speaking in English. Uh, there will be translators who will be at the same time translating uh, my questions and your answers. Um, so if you could pause um, briefly after my questions so that the interpreters can keep up. And if you can wait for the red light uh, before speaking, uh, that, will, that will allow the, uh, the interpreters to accurately uh, interpret today. Uh, I wanted to start, uh, you indicated that your occupation was a uh, photographer. Uh, could you give us a brief overview of your career as a photographer uh, when you began and the various places you worked uh, during your career? I started my photography while I was serving on active duty in the United States Army. I first started while I was stationed in Germany. I was sent to Vietnam. During my service in the Army in Vietnam, I transferred into photography and I worked that job for half of the time I was in Vietnam. When I was discharged from the military in 19. 73, February 73, I came back to Indochina, and I lived in Cambodia 73, April 73, until May 75. I worked as a freelance photographer. Thank you for that uh, uh, overview. Merci. Um, Turning uh, now to the period uh, when you arrived in Cambodia and began Je working as a freelance photographer uh, in April 1973. Uh, can you tell us uh, when you arrived in this country at that time, uh, was the U.S. Uh, Air Force bombing missions of Cambodia still ongoing at that time? Yes, the American bombing campaign did not stop until August 15, 1973. Uh, thank you. That was going to be my next question, which is when did it end? You, you've indicated the 15th of August, 1973. Uh, how, do, how do you recall that date? Well, I remember that date very well. I was out on Highway 3 most of that morning. I remember right around 12 noon, which was supposed to be the end of the American bombing campaign. There were a few bombing missions in the vicinity, and then it stopped. So I have a very clear recollection of 15 August. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rockoff. Uh, I want Thank now you. to uh, ask you Merci, some uh, questions of uh, areas that you uh, visited uh, during the war in Cambodia from uh, 1973 up to April 1975. Um, can you, um, again, why don't we start, if you could give us a overview of uh, where the locations that you visited and covered as a photographer uh, during that time period. During the time I worked out of Phnom Penh, I, actually there were very few places you could go to in Cambodia beyond a 20 or 30 kilometer distance from Phnom Penh. A few provincial capitals you could fly to, the highways were almost always closed. The two fermées. years I was here, Highway 4 to Kampong Sam was only open two times for a few days each. Si uh, if fois. you wanted to go Or out to the deep fois. countryside, you would have to hitch a ride with the military or sometimes with their helicopters. So I did go to a, a few places, but usually it was going out on the roads, 
such as Highway 4, Highway 5, and Highway 1, where the uh, three highways where the most of the uh, battles took place. Was there a period um, during this, uh, the Question. period of the war in between 1973 and 1975, uh, Entre that you were able to go to Udong? Une, une où vous avez pu vous dans la ville uh, I had been to Udong in 1970 when I was in the U.S. Army and the U.S. Udong en 1970, the US incursion into Cambodia for two months. The uh, incident at Udong during the two years I was here, the B-52 uh, mistaken strike on the town, I did not have a chance to go down to that. Do you recall um, a period um, where uh, Udong, this, the town of Udong, had uh, originally been captured by the Khmer Rouge, moment, Khmer but was Rouge then retaken by the Lanol government forces? Do you recall that event? Vous -vous I recall. I was not there, but I recall the event, and I'm sorry I cannot recollect the approximate date or dates. Uh, after the uh, Lano government forces had recaptured uh, the town of Udong, uh, were you able to make a trip there to see the uh, city or town? Avez-vous pu vous rendre à Oudong pour euh, observer ce qui s'est passé? Non. Réponse. Non. Were you Question. present um, during a battle that took place um, in uh, later in 1974 uh, near Kampong Chenang? lors d'un combat ou deux combats qui avaient eu lieu près de Kampong Chenang en 1974. Kampong Chenang, I was in Kampong Chenang beginning of October 1974. There was a significant battle going on between the Cham Brigade and the Khmer Rouge. I had also gone to Kampong Chenang to help recover the body of an Associated Press photographer, Cambodian photographer named Lim Savat. He had been killed five days earlier. And I was with a group of Khmer soldiers that helped recover his body, and it was sent to Phnom Penh for his family to cremate. I stayed up there and the day after helping to recover Lim Savat's body, I was seriously wounded. I was medevaced out of there and dead. Pretty much is what happened during my three days up in Kampong How were you injured while you were at Kampong Chenang? Shrapnel from a uh, burst in a tree, maybe 20 meters from me, maybe a mortar or a toilless rifle, I'm not certain which. I was wounded very seriously, uh, shrapnel in my wrist, a few other parts of the body, and I had a piece that went through the right atrium of the heart. The Korean photographer Joseph Lee, who I was with, was wounded also. Uh, we were taken back to a field hospital where I had surgery, emergency surgery, maybe 45 minutes to an hour after the initial wounding. I was operated on by a Red Cross surgical team headed by Dr. Eric Aranander. De la Croix -Rouge. They stabilized Le my condition. Eric I had a two-minute cardiac arrest. Ils ont Mon cœur arrêté pendant deux uh, about 1 a.m., 2 a.m., I was flown out matin. by a twin-engine aircraft that uh, landed on a highway. 
qui s'est atterri sur l'autoroute m'a emmené à Saigon. To a military hospital there where they stabilized my condition and I was flown to the Puis j'ai ensuite été envoyé aux Philippines. How long uh, did it take you to recuperate uh, from this injury and how long Quelle was it before you went back in Cambodia quand êtes-vous uh, rentré resuming your au Cambodge pour reprendre vos activités de photographe? It took a couple of months to recuperate, uh, but I was back in country mois. about five weeks Juste later. Retour au pays quelques cinq semaines plus tard. Cinq semaines plus tard, je t'apprête sur l'ordre. Ma convalescence a duré plusieurs mois, mais je suis revenu au Cambodge cinq semaines plus tard. Je veux maintenant vous poser quelques questions regarding the period, the question months leading up to April 1975. Je vais poser quelques questions 75. sur les mois précédents, the first thing avril 1975. Je voudrais vous demander, est-ce que pendant cette période, entre février, mars et avril 1975, Uh, whether you heard radio broadcasts dire, si or statements vous avez entendu by the Khmer Rouge à la radio, that referred to seven supertraitres. Super I heard of reports on the radio, entendu à la radio I'm getting the second or third hand. Uh, de some journalists wrote this stuff. Seven, I'm not sure of the total number, but the, the click of traitors that, that overthrew Sienna. The uh, reports coming across then were more than just uh, the group of traitors that also touched on when the war was over, everybody would go back to where they came from before the war. That was the message that was going around. And it was easy for many people to believe that because the majority of the population the majority of the population of Phnom Penh were refugees, more than 2 million. I'd like to um, uh, read to you uh, a, a 26 February 1975 uh, communique de presse uh, du 26 from the Funk uh, that was uh, issued or signed by Q. Sampan and broadcast on the Voice of Funk radio. And the, the document reference is E3. Code du slash one one seven. That's E three slash one one seven. And uh, the reference is at English. La référence page est à la zero page zero 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 one six says six seven soixante sept seven two soixante douze. A French en français zero 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 two eight vingt huit one four quatorze three two trente deux. Uh, Khmer et zero zero two four zero zero two three zero nine zero nine. And paragraph one of this communique uh, uh, contains the following statement: quote, "Concerning the seven traitors in Phnom Penh, à propos des sept the National Congress Penh, has decided as follows: traitors Lon Nol." Les traîtres, Sirik Matak, Sirik Matak, Son Nok Tan, Tan Cheng Heng, Cheng Heng In, Tam, In Tam, Long Murray, and Saten Fernandez, Fernandez are the chieftains of the traitors and ringleaders les chefs of the treacherous anti-national coup d'état. On behalf of the Funk, Grunk, and CPNLAF, Du Grunk. The National Et Congress declares Grunk. it absolutely necessary to kill these seven traitors. And quote. Uh, my question is, do you recall hearing or reading si of this communique from the Fonk that calls for the execution of the Lon Nol traitors? Annoncé la décision de mettre à mort I did not read this document or any articles that may have been written about it by journalists, but I did hear about the uh, 
about the fact that these people were to be put Mais to death. Je me souviens qu'il était dit que c'est cette personne devait être Can you tell us uh, was it widely known Question. that the at the time that the Khmer Rouge were calling Et for the execution of these traitors? Que les Khmer Rouge avait appelé à l'exécution de ces traîtres? I can't say how widely known that was. I'm aware of it through my association as a freelance photographer and reading things that were put out by, say, Associated Press or New York Times. Associated Press or the New York Times. C'est comme ça que moi je l'ai su. During the um, period prior to April 1975, uh, did you yourself ever hear any radio broadcasts uh, by the Khmer Rouge? de radio diffusée par les Khmer Rouges Non. Réponse. Non. I'd like to turn now to the Question. days immediately leading up to uh, the 17th of April 1975. And can you tell us uh, where you were residing uh, in the uh, immediate period uh, before the 17th of April. Tout juste avant le 17 April. Réponse. Yes, I had a very oui, inexpensive okay. room in euh, what is now today known as the Hotel Azi très on Monty Vaughan euh, Boulevard. Ce que l'on aujourd'hui comme l'hôtel portant le nom Hotel Azi sur le boulevard Monty And uh, did you uh, spend uh, any time uh, during that period at was uh, what was then called the Hotel uh, Panam Hotel Le Panam? Et Et vous passez du temps à cette Pouvez-vous nous décrire la période où vous avez yes, passé dans cet hôtel qui uh, s'appelait Le Phnom Penh? Yes, I would go by there frequently. Uh, there were a number of reasons, oui, one being some of the journalists souvent, that worked for organizations and could afford to stay there. Stayed there. They had a swimming pool, a good restaurant. It was one block away from where the Ministry of Information would do a daily briefing for the press. And uh, so I tended to go there frequently. I'd come back from the field, maybe the end of the day. Je revenais du terrain vers la fin de la journée, je rentrais en ville, si j'étais à l'extérieur de la ville. I can connect with uh, Associated Press, who had a uh, room, had a, Press, a bureau there un, un bureau at the hotel. So yes, I would go by there frequently. Oui, and sur... on occasion, I stayed there. I même déjà resté. used to stay in a room that was rented on an annual basis by the Los Angeles Times and I had a way to uh, pick the lock on the door and I stayed there and the room clerk would, desk clerk would let me know if they were coming into town, which was only two or three times a year. And can you tell us the uh, location of the hotel uh, Panam, was that the same uh, place at which the Raffles Hotel is now located? Yes, it is the same hotel. Do you recall uh, whether there was a period where uh, the Red Cross moved into the uh, si, hotel uh, Le Panam and Croix set up operations there. Et a emménagé à l'hôtel Le Panam et a installé ses bureaux là-bas. Yes. Uh, there were some Red oui. Cross personnel that lived at the hotel. Membres, there were bungalows out back. Some agencies rented on a regular basis. About a week before the end of the war, about the time of the American evacuation on 12 April, the International Red Cross declared that the safe zone, there was a large banner hung in front of the hotel with the Red Cross. They were admitting people that needed uh, immediate medical attention. There were thousands of people milling around trying to gain access to the hotel. 
the Red Cross had set up a surgical theater in the back of the hotel. But on 17 April, regardless, they were kicked out of the hotel with everybody else. Thank you. We'll, um, we'll get to the, those events uh, um, later uh, today. Um, I'd like to show you a uh, photograph um, that is from, uh, not from yourself, but from uh, Roland Neveu's book, The Fall of Phnom Penh. Uh, Mr. President, this is a case file document D. 313 slash 1.2.11. It's D, to repeat, D313 slash 1.2.11. And the photograph I would like to show uh, the witness is, appears at uh, page 0043242424. And uh, if we may put that on the screen, and if I also may present a copy to the witness. Que la photo soit affichée sur les écrans. J'ai aussi une copie imprimée que je peux remettre au témoin. President, you may proceed. Le président. Court officer is now instructed to the document from the prosecution for the witness. Uh, I'd like you to look at the photograph, uh, Mr. Rokoff, and tell me if you can identify the building that's shown in this photograph. Le bâtiment qui y apparaît. Yes, that is the oui. Hotel Royal. C'est l'Hotel Royal. The uh, Royal. building as it looked back then. The Banner with the Red Cross. I just find it very strange looking at this photograph and not seeing any people because I had always seen hundreds and then towards the very end thousands of people milling around. But that is the, uh, the Royal. And when you referred to a banner with the Red Cross being hung, is that uh, the banner that's shown in this photograph? Est-ce que c'est le drapeau que l'on voit sur la photo Yes. Réponse, oui. I'd like to turn now to the events Question. of 17 Passons April aux événements, aux événements du 17 avril 1975. And can you tell us uh, on that day uh, how Ce and when you first became aware that Comment Khmer Rouge troops appris pour la were, fois uh, had entered the city of Khmer Phnom Penh. Étaient entrées dans la ville de Phnom Penh. <coughs> the night of the 16th, I la nuit was down at the Post-Telegraph office along with a few other journalists au bureau du to include avec Sidney Schoenberg, New York Times, y compris Sydney Chambers, New York John, Times Swain. John Swain. They were still able to get copy out Ils at the very end. The teletype was still working. À la fin, uh, la machine continuait de fonctionner. There was a huge fire on the other side of the Mont Vong Bridge. De côté du the uh, shelling was intense on the Chui Chambar Peninsula. Le pilonnage du and First indication I had of Khmer Rouge entering the city was around maybe 8 o'clock in the morning going back towards the Hotel Royale and the armored personnel carriers that were lined up in front of the Royale for the previous couple of days. A few of them headed north, past the French embassy and brought Shortly afterwards, brought some of the political cadre back and stopped in front of the 
cathedral, the Catholic cathedral that used to stand off of Montevang near the Royale. Huge crowds of people started gathering. A cadre with a bullhorn was saying, the war is over, the war is over. Everything was okay at that point. People were not panicking, they were happy, the soldiers, the civilians, about an hour later, the mood changed. But I would say my first indication of the Khmer Rouge coming in, plus truckloads coming from the north by the French embassy, uh, 8 o'clock around that. Uh, where, where and when was it that you yourself first saw uh, any Khmer Rouge soldiers in the city? Around 8 a.m. by the Hotel Royale, the Khmer Rouge that I had just mentioned coming south from by the French Embassy. There were other groups coming from other directions. Uh, a group met up with the group that came from by the French Embassy, a group from south on Montevang met. They met up. A few of them broke off, went east, uh, I think Street 108 area. There was the former location of the Ministry of Information. A few ran into that uh, to secure that. I spent the next two hours, three hours, going through parts of the city, hitching rides with Khmer Rouge. It was easy to travel around the first hour. I got as far as Independence Monument, then I went back up to the intersection of Bonivong and Sihanouk Boulevard, where I spent maybe an hour. And I photographed the collection of weapons, disarming of soldiers, a large group of soldiers traveling uh, under guard being sent towards the Olympic Stadium. I, uh, <coughs> I was standing next to Roland Neveau and one of the cadre came up to him and asked in French, where are the Americans? Roland Neveau said they departed. I'm very glad he did not ask me because I do not speak French. A few minutes later, some more Khmer Rouge came by and they uh, saw me walking in the midst of a bunch of government prisoners. And, uh, I was just trying to get to the next block, and then a jeep with some Khmer Rouge. A guy puts his hand up, they stop. I was very concerned, so I went about 20 meters ahead, with, and then I went off to the right, and I hid behind a truck for about uh, two minutes, three minutes, and then I came out. There was no problem. I just did not want someone talking to me, asking me in French, who are you? Uh, I started to head back north on Monivong Boulevard, a white Peugeot driven by a Cambodian in hospital scrubs, the hospital uniform they wear at work, was driving. He stopped the vehicle. I was trying to get a ride. He, uh, I got in and he started talking French. He said, I do not understand. He says, where were where you from? I said, America. Dit, he got very nervous. And then he said, he just came from the Prekhet Melia Hospital. And he said, people were being put out of the hospital. I was dropped off by the Hotel Royal. Excuse me one minute. I walked into the I walked into the hotel. I saw right off uh, Dith Prawn. Cambodian assistant to Sydney Schoenberg. I mentioned where I had just come from. Sydney came up. We went in his vehicle, Sydney's vehicle, down to the Prekhet Melia Hospital. 
If I can stop, stop you there, I uh, will come back uh, to the period that you went to the hospital later. I want to go back now and ask you some more questions about the events uh, that you observed during the morning, uh, that you've, uh, some of which you referred to uh, uh, just now. Um, You've described to us the areas of the city that vous avez décrit um, you de la ville uh, covered uh, during the morning. Vous êtes déplacé and la uh, I want to ask you now a few questions about questions your observations of the Khmer Rouge troops um, who had entered the city. Uh, first, uh, what did you, uh, what can you recall or what did you observe in regards to the age of the Khmer Rouge soldiers? Were there many of them who were young or y children? Parmi eux, beaucoup de jeunes ou d'enfants? Réponse. There were quite a few young teenage soldiers. To give an approximate age, uh, I can't say. Maybe 16. Peut-être 16 ans. Give or take a year. And une année près. that's also what I would see out uh, in the battlefield after vu casualties. You would see very young soldiers, Khmer Rouge and Lon Nol soldiers, very young. I want to show you a Question. photograph uh, that is in the uh, case file now. And uh, uh, Mr. President, this Monsieur is President, document D366. D366. Slash bah. 7.1. Point four one six. That is D three six six slash seven point one point four one six. If we may show that on the screen and uh, present a copy to the witness. À et en faire un au the president, le you may proceed. Allez-y. If you could look at this uh, photograph, Question. Mr. Rokoff, and um, my Veuillez first question is whether you recognize the photograph. Est-ce que vous reconnaissez cette photo? Yes, I recognize it. Réponse. It is my photograph. Oui. I took that on the morning of 17 April. Le matin du 17 avril. And are you able Question. to tell us the approximate location uh, where you took this photograph? À quel endroit approximativement avez-vous pris cette photo? The intersection of Monivong and Sihanouk Boulevard. And who is Question. the uh, person that is shown uh, uh, in this photograph, the Qui person in the very front? Que voit à -plan de cette photo? Khmer Rouge. Réponse. Un Khmer Rouge. And do you recall, Question. or re, are you able to give us uh, an estimate of approximately how old this Khmer Rouge soldier was? Quel âge environ avait ce soldat Khmer Rouge? Le the President, témoin, uh, Mr. Witness, could you please hold on counsel for Mr. Nunchir? You may now proceed. Thank Mr. President, Mr. Um, I would like to object to this question. Objection. Uh, I don't think the witness has any expertise in uh, estimating the age of une um, young Khmer soldiers or Khmer soldiers in general. Jeune soldat Khmer ou Mr. President, this is a matter uh, on which uh, people can provide opinions uh, based on their experience in life as to the approximate age of people they observe. We all understand it's it's an estimate, not, not bien, science, but this is a testimony that is, that is certainly permissible. Scientifique, mais c'est en tout cas une question qu'il est permis de poser. Man. The president, Le the president. objection is not sustained. L'objection est Witness, rejetée. Mr. Witness, veuillez to, répondre to the à la question posée. <coughs> The question le was, témoin. how old do I believe this uh, Khmer Rouge is? Quel âge devait avoir I am guessing 16, 17. Je dirais 16 ans, 
17 ans. And um, can you describe uh, for us uh, what, uh, what the soldier was carrying around his waist uh, on porte, what appears to be a belt of some sort? À la taille, ce soldat apparemment c'est une sorte de ceinture. Yes, he is carrying two bayonets, Il porte deux a grenade, bayonets, and I assume am ammunition in some of the pouches. Et je suppose This is uh, aussi des dans same equipment that is also used by the Law and Roll regime, par le de American bayonets and grenades, des and M16. Des It was used by both sides. M16, par les deux camps. And my next question was going to be whether question. you recognize the a gun, si vous a weapon that the uh, a soldier is holding in his right, right, ha uh, right arm. Par le soldat dans sa main droite. Yes, Réponse. it is an American oui. M16. C'est un M16 de fabrication américaine. And Question. In addition to, to this soldier, can you tell us uh, what other types of weapons uh, you saw being carried uh, by the Khmer Rouge Quel forces who entered Phnom Penh on the 17th of April? Have you seen the soldiers Khmer Rouge portés, soldiers who were entered in Phnom Penh on the 17th of April? The majority of Réponse. the Khmer Rouge had AK-47s, AK some M-16s, but not Certains anywhere near as many as the AKs, mais bien moins some B-40s, also known as RPGs, B B40, on aussi RPG. and uh, it was mostly light weapons. Any uh, armor, RPG, armored personnel tube. carriers that the Khmer Rouge were driving around in, any vehicles, these are what they obtained the morning of the 17th. Pour les blindés, les armes transportées étaient celles recueillies le matin du 17 avril. Like to uh, show you now a, uh, a Question. couple more photographs from J'aimerais vous montrer um, d'autres uh, Roland Neveu's book Fall of Phnom Penh. De Roland Neveu sur la chute uh, de Phnom Penh. And uh, I apologize that I'm going to be showing you some of his Je photographs. Je vais vous montrer um, certaines de ses photos à lui. Excusez-moi. I understand that from the court clerks this morning that um, uh, your photographs here in town were damaged by some water and that your negatives are back in uh, America. Par de et um, we do have a few photographs that may be yours, um, but we'll, I'll also be showing you today some autres, photographs from, from Mr. Neveu. Understand that, uh, why, I, why I'm doing that is because we, uh, we, have, uh, we don't necessarily have all your photographs at this time. And Mr. Photos President, uh, the a photograph Monsieur I would like to present to the witness now is uh, from D313 slash 1.2 slash 11. Uh, this is Roland Neveu's book. And uh, the uh, two photographs I'd like to present, the first one is at page 00432444. And the second uh, from page 00432458. Uh, if I may uh, present those to the witness, and then we'd like to start with the first one on the screen. Remettre ces photos au témoin. Nous allons commencer par la première photo qui est à l'écran. The president, Le président, you may proceed. Uh, Mr. Rockoff, I'd like to start with the first of the uh, photographs Rockoff, that was handed to you. Um, this is the one, photo. if you look at the numbers up in the left-hand corner, it has the number 00432444. And my question for you is Voici whether you question. are able to identify for us the uh, weapon uh, that is being carried by the uh, uh, individuals in this photo. Que transportent les personnes que l'on voit sur la photo. 
Yes, uh, this photograph taken by Roland Neveu is by the intersection of Sihanouk Boulevard, Bonivon. The Khmer Rouge in the front is carrying an RPG. The second one in line is carrying an American-made grenade launcher called the M79. Shoots a 40 millimeter grenade, but in addition, that Khmer Rouge has half a dozen regular grenades you throw on his belt. There were many, many RPGs evident that day. And one question I wanted to ask you for those of us who are looking at photographs from that day. Um, how are you able to identify uh, Khmer Rouge soldiers Comment and distinguish them from uh, Law Nol government soldiers? Is there a way when we look at these photos uh, for us to make the distinction between the two? Comment peut-on distinguer les deux? It uh, is not always easy to differentiate based on the uniform. There's such a mix of uh, uniforms. But when the Khmer Rouge entered the city after 8 a.m. on 17 April, the government soldiers were not armed. That's the big difference. Can I ask you whether there was uh, any difference Question. in the footwear uh, of the Khmer Rouge soldiers and the La Nole soldiers? Many Khmer Rouge had flip-flops. Many did not have shoes. Some had so-called jungle boots manufactured by the Americans. Sometimes they're acquired on the battlefield. Sometimes uh, there are ways of getting boots. Uh, I mean, it happens, I, I know, because I had been wounded one time and my boots were stolen from me. And in regards to the uh, law and all government soldiers, did any of them walk around barefoot or in sandals. I have been in the field uh, with the government troops, and even though they are well equipped and have shoes, often they would just wear flip flops, sandals. I did not see the so-called uh, misnamed uh, sandal made out of tires uh, like you would see in Vietnam a lot, the so-called Ho Chi Minh sandals. There were a few on Khmer Rouge when after the battle you would uh, find bodies and you would see sometimes the uh, flip-flops or the Ho Chi Minh sandals. But the government troops had, uh, if you were in a good unit and your colonel took care of you, he would provide you with the boots, the uniforms. Uh, on the uh, uh, seventeenth of April, uh, did you see any? Uh, did you see any Khmer Rouge soldiers who were communicating by radio? Communiqué par radio. Yes, there evidently was very good radio oui. network going. Uh, some Khmer Rouge had U.S. military radios called the PRC-25. PRC there was a Chinese radio that looked rather similar to it in size. In those days, you did not have cell phones, of course, or Motorola radios. What you had were rather bulky. And uh, did not see that many radios. But usually, with uh, somebody who obviously was in charge, uh, you would have a radio operator close by. Yeah, I'd like to, uh, while we're on this subject, uh, show Question. you another photograph um, from the same time, vous Roland Neveu's Roland book. Neveu, uh, this one, Mr. President, it's the same document, D313-1.2.11. This photograph uh, appears at 
page 0043-24-53, uh, if I may show it on the screen and present it to the witness. The President, you may proceed. In this photograph, uh, Mr. Rokoff, I want to direct your attention to the uh, soldier in the very middle uh, and ask you if you are able to recognize the equipment or device uh, that is being used by uh, the soldier that appears in the middle of this photograph, who appears to be holding something to his head. Uh, it's not a real clear photograph, but I do believe that's the handset for a radio. But I, I can't say for certain. Are you able to uh, recognize uh, the location of this photo or whether, can you tell us whether these are Khmer Rouge uh, forces or soldiers who appear? The guy in the center that is apparently holding the radio headset to, to his ear, uh, I can't say about him. The ones to the right on the photo, à droite sur la photo really look like Khmer Krahome. The guy on the radio, uh, I can't say. À radio, je sais rien. Because he still has a weapon on him, I Il would have to assume he is Khmer Rouge. Que un Khmer Rouge. Well, thank you. You mentioned um, uh, in your uh, description of your uh, journey around en the city that day, you made reference to some uh, troops who Vous came from the south uh, sud, or southern part of the city. De la ville. Um, during your travels Pendant around the city in the morning, were you ville, able to observe là, uh, any of the Khmer Rouge troops who had come from Khmer and were occupying the southern sector of the city? Du secteur de la ville et occupant ce secteur, le secteur sud de la ville. I saw a good number of Khmer Rouge headed de Khmer Rouge northern, northern direction vers le nord, coming towards the Independence Monument. Direction du monument de uh, these guys look very dirty, tired, Ils très sales, not in a good mood, fatigués, and obviously we're humeur, coming into the city from uh, an area where there was considerable amount of fighting on the other side of the so-called Mani Vong Bridge. Uh, I decided to not go further south. I headed back north from the Independence Monument a little ways and then over to uh, Mani Vong. Then back to the uh, intersection of Sihanouk and Monivong. I stayed there for maybe an hour and a very, very small pile of weapons in the middle of the intersection then grew to several hundred. There were many Khmer Rouge uh, just hanging around there, not doing anything. There were Khmer Rouge coming by in a truck, giving out sodas, Pepsis, and uh, ice. Des camions, des Everybody was in an okay mood. There was no tension, tenseness, and the civilian tension. population was looking on, but kept back on the sidewalk. The photograph of mine showing the Khmer Rouge soldier photo, in the foreground with the M16, that building in the background is, used to be a movie theater. Now it's cinema. the site of a gas station. But that intersection service, became a collection point for many, many truckloads of weapons. Young students des and some boys, probably too young to be students, uh, were charged with collecting weapons, unloading them from the trucks. Jeunes pour être des élèves étaient chargés de décharger les armes uh, the witness, des camions. Uh, a, uh, Question. Uh, two more photographs uh, from the same 
uh, book, du même ouvrage. Uh, and these appear at pages 00 43 and 00 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 and Le Président, Le je vous en prie, allez-y. And Mr. Rokoff, if you could look at these two photographs Question. that I've identified Tell me if you recognize uh, what is depicted in these photos. Est-ce que vous reconnaissez les sujets de la photo? It looks like a collection point for weapons confiscated from the law and law forces. forces. I believe uh, the photograph on page 90 Two and 91 in Roland's book were taken. I believe they were taken at the intersection of Monivon and Siano. Uh, thank you. Um, Question. Now, when you saw uh, the troops uh, who were coming uh, from the south, coming north towards Independence Monument, uh, during that time period, did you? Uh, observe uh, any people at that time who were being taken out of the city by the Khmer Rouge que les Khmer soldiers. Faisaient sortir de la ville. No, I did not Réponse. see anyone non. being taken Je vu by, away from the city by the Khmer Rouge. In fact, there was no mass movement uh, out of the city for the first few hours de gens quittant la ville au cours des premières heures. Uh, I want to uh, uh, read to you a uh, excerpt from uh, John Swain's uh, book. J'aimerais vous lire un extrait du livre um, de John Swain where he makes reference to something uh, that you told him. Il uh, fait first, référence à uh, une chose que vous avez John Swain once vous this morning. Can you tell the John Swain, John Swain matin, was? Qui était John Swain? A British journalist. journalist Britannique. And uh, were you with him at times on the 17th of April and the ensuing days? Vous êtes-il arrivé d'être avec lui le 17 avril et dans les jours qui ont suivi? Yes, uh, the afternoon of the uh, 17th and also the next three weeks. Uh, during that time question. period, did you see question. Mr. Swain keeping a journal or diary? Have you remarked that John Swain took notes in a journal or a diary? Question. Uh, John Swain took notes in a journal or diary? Yes, response. In fact. Mr. President, I'd now like to read to the witness an excerpt from uh, John Swain's book, The Fall of Phnom Penh, uh, and um, the document number is D313-1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1
and French 0076-38-11. And uh, in this part of Mr. Swain's book, the, the uh, following uh, quote appears. Quote, uh, Rokoff, the photographer, Rokoff. came back from the southern sector saying the Khmer Rouge there Sud. were grim-faced and seasoned soldiers. Their mud-stained feet and uniforms showed they had not been pussyfooting around. They were disarming government soldiers, stacking all weapons into huge piles, throwing away the boots, and marching the men out of the city to unknown destinations. End of quote. Um, my question is, do you recall uh, at some point um, telling Mr. Swain that you had seen uh, soldiers marching men out of the city, uh, and if so, can you tell us when, when it was that you uh, observed that event? I did not tell John Swain I saw people being led out of the city or soldiers being led out of the city. What he might be referring to is what I reported about soldiers that had been disarmed, hundreds of them, being marched uh, westerly past the intersection I was at at Monivong and Sunuk Boulevard. And I have to assume there were being taken to the uh, Olympic Stadium, a Cambodian said that later on, and uh, that is not the same as taking them out of the city. So, uh, as you as you described when you first gave your account of the morning, what you recall seeing uh, were Lano government soldiers being marched westward from the intersection of uh, Monivong and Sinuk, is that correct? Monivong and Sinuk. Yes, uh, yes, and about one third of them had their hands up. Et le tiers eux avait les mains and uh, not many Khmer Rouge traveling with them, because the majority of the Khmer, Khmer Rouge at that intersection était, stayed in place. La plupart des Khmer Rouge qui étaient postés à, cette, à ce carrefour. Do you recall restés? approximately how many? Lano government soldiers you witnessed being marched west de from that location. Approximative de soldats du gouvernement de Lano qui ont it's été emmenés vers l'ouest. Not easy to give a good estimate. I, uh, as I was walking in the midst of them to get a block or two away from that intersection, uh, and as I related earlier in my testimony, I veered off to the right and hit behind a truck for a couple of minutes. And then I really distanced myself from that line of people. I did not want to join them permanently. Mr. President, I'd like to, to show the witness now uh, two more uh, photographs um, from photographs Mr. Nevu's book. Uh, this is, uh, again, the document is D313-1.2.11. And these photographs appear at 0043-2469 and 0043-2470. Uh, we may show them on the screen and present them to the witness with your leave. The President, you may proceed. Le President, je vous en prie. If you could look at these two uh, photos, Mr. Rokoff, and uh, my first question is whether you recognize the events or location that is shown uh, in these two photographs. Yes, I'm pretty sure this is the same group of soldiers I commented on earlier. Uh, uh, they weren't ex they weren't smiling, at least when I looked at them. Walked with them 
quand j'ai marché. But I'm sure that's uh, that intersection. Mais je suis uh, certain yes. qu'il s'agit du même carrefour. And you indicated that there was a part of the day Question. where you were uh, at the same location as, as Mr. Nevu. Can you uh, clarify for us when the, exactly when it was that you and he were at the same location? Préciser quand vous étiez au même endroit? It. I did not have a watch. I'm bad on uh, approximate times, but it would be late morning of the 17th at the intersection of Monivong and Sienouk. We were in that location. I was there at least an hour. I don't know where Roland went to later Je that day, uh, no, we did all suite. connect later Mais that evening at the French Embassy. Mais nous nous tous retrouvés ce, le soir même à l'ambassade de France. And uh, if you could look at the, at the second photo, and if we could put that on the screen, which is uh, the one uh, on page 80 of the book and the ERN page 0043-2470, uh, do you recognize uh, that location? On reconnaissez vous l'endroit où cette photo a été prise? I am uh, pretty sure that is the uh, intersection of Monivong and Sienok. Je suis certain qu'il s'agit toujours du carrefour des boulevards Sienok et Monivong. And to the best of your recollection, is this a uh, accurate depiction of what you observed at that location que cela ce uh, que in terms of law and old government so soldiers being marched away by the Khmer Rouge? This is an accurate portrayal oui, of what I saw that day. It's also in photographs that I took. But yes, Roland has captured the movement of prisoners. Roland, uh, en effet, uh, uh, Thank you, uh, Mr. Witness. Des, uh, Mr. President, I was about to move to a different uh, topic Parker. at this Merci point. Uh, if, uh, uh, Monsieur le Président, je vais maintenant break. passer à un autre sujet. Sans doute le moment est-il opportun pour prendre la pause du matin. Le Président. The President. Merci thank you. Beaucoup. It is now an appropriate effet, moment for the adjournment. The Chamber will adjourn for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. The next Et session will be resumed by 11 o'clock. Court officer is now instructed to assist uh, Mr. Rockoff during the adjournment and have him return to the courtroom by 11 o'clock.